Hey, thanks for clicking on this video. My name is Zaji and today I would like to share with you a little bit about some knitting things. In particular, I want to talk a little bit about the progress that I've been making on projects that we've been talking about in the podcast thus far, plus some things you all haven't seen yet that I've been making progress on. But I also want to touch on some future plans I have for projects that I have already purchased yarn for. So it's gonna kind of be a yarn haul too. So if you like knitting content, if you like talking about knitting patterns and yarn and going through luscious textures and knit goodness, then I encourage you to not only subscribe to this channel, please do turn on that notification bell so that you do not miss any future uploads from me. Welcome back to this podcast. I have been thinking about all these projects that I want to share with you because I've been such a busy bee. I've kind of been knitting on a little bit of everything so you'll see that in this video but first we're going to start off with what I'm wearing. I have on a sweater from Marie Green. It's called the Stowaway Pullover and I actually got it from her book Seamless Knit Sweaters or what is it? I think it's seam seamless sweaters in two weeks or something like that. Um, I'm going to leave it, yeah, seamless knit sweaters in two weeks. So I'm going to leave that information down below to get that book because I actually purchased this book because I was like so convinced that I would never be able to have the patience to get through a sweater project and now I'm like, <laughs> you still don't. <laughs> I guess technically, yes, I do because I do come back to my sweaters and finish them, but typically I am not knitting as fast as I knit this sweater, but this was kind of like a, um, an experiment, if you will, because I tried to do all the techniques that she talked about in this, in this, um, book on how to make this sweater, like how to be fast, you know, how to time yourself so you know, um, how much you can really get done and she really helps you to make sweaters as quickly as possible because all of these sweaters are more or less knit in one piece seamless so you don't have to worry about a lot of the shaping but that's kind of one of the things that I really loved about knitwear and the knit designs that I really like are typically the ones that do have more shaping in them so this book was really helpful because it did show me how to knit very fast and ways that I can pick up speed and also um, really started my love for knitting in the round because it is so fast. Um, and I just, I don't know, I really liked the patterns in the book, but I just realized that they're not things that I would reach for all the time because I do have the sweater and I do wear it quite often now, but that's only because I've made lots of other sweaters and I, you know, can throw this one in. If the, I don't know if that makes a lot of sense, but I like the book. I like the patterns in that book. And I really think about going back to that book and picking up just some quicker sweaters to, um, to work up because I really do like those styles. I just know that I prefer, like I said, a lot more detail, which does add, of course, to the time it takes you to make something. Because if you've got loads of bobbles and cables and color work and all that kind of stuff, that does really take the time that it takes to make a garment straight up like straight up you might as well double it once you say bobbles because ooh ooh mmm that hits different when you're doing bobbles like crazy so um it is something you know just to keep in your your repertoire because I feel like these could be really good palette cleansers if you want to do something that's like a sweater that is fast to make um, but you're not making accessories that you maybe don't wear because I'm not someone who wears loads of knit accessories. So I would much rather work on a fast sweater. So I am excited to pull that book back out because I will be dabbling into that soon enough. Anyways, love this pattern. Um, I really like that book. 
but I made this yarn or made this yarn <laughs> made this sweater with Lion Brand Pound of Love it is a really inexpensive yarn I know at my Joann store they frequently go on sale for $6.99 a ball and you really do need no matter what size I'd say you probably need two balls for an adult size you probably need two balls to make a sweater so being able to make a sweater under 15 bucks is a huge win plus Pound of Love I really actually like the feel of and I feel like I've had this sweater for years now and I've washed it countless times and it still feels really soft I still really really like the stitch definition and everything and the colors they've really expanded on and I'm gonna talk about those as well but yeah pound of love the love for pound of love started with this sweater so I can't remember the color name but I'm sure I'll have it on the screen or something for you. But yeah, one of my fave colors. And I do have a, a good bit of this left over. And I plan on using it for something else. Probably going to use it as like a color work color. We'll see. Okay, anyways. So that's just what I'm wearing. So now we're going to get into um, some finish slash work in progress. So I have one thing that I'm saying is still a work in progress because I just need to do pockets. Okay, so let's get into it. Oh my gosh! So many orange things in one video! Okay, anyways. <laughs> I'm already so excited. My voice went up like super high! Um, I have finished Nala's little poncho and I'm super, uh, I'm super obsessed with this style. That's the back. This is the front. Now the only thing I have left to do is put pockets on this thing. Um, I have talked ad nauseum about this turtleneck poncho already. It was really nice to work through. I have been working on quite a few things, so I wasn't really um, spending as much time on this project as I, um, I guess, kind of started off with. But I still feel like this was a really quick make. I did go really fast through the beginning and then the end. I got nervous and I still did kind of knit the front longer than it was supposed to be and I didn't rip back because I couldn't make myself do it <laughs> I just couldn't I just added the ribbing on and I sewed it up I'm really happy with how this seam looks let me see if I can zoom in on this seam I am super happy with how that seam looks I think it is probably one of the best seams I've ever done. I'm not very good at doing seaming. I feel like it's not my my biggest skill in this whole knit situation. Definitely not my biggest skill, but I feel like I've been improving quite a bit. So I have a lot of garments that have like sewing involved that are knit in pieces and I'm like, I'm not afraid of you, okay? I'm not afraid of you because it doesn't look crazy anymore. It's starting to look all right. So I'm very happy with how that is looking. Um, I'm going to add the pockets on and I probably, I don't know that I will talk about this in any more podcasts because geez, okay, y'all know this is such a cute pattern and I had such a fun time making it. I love the texture and the colors. So I'm going to make some pockets with um, this yarn and put it on there and... Um, then we will see what it looks like in its final states. But that's all I'm going to talk about in this video um, for this pattern because it just doesn't. We don't need to go into that more. So this next whip I want to share with you is a project that I also have talked about in podcast in a podcast before. But this is the Triangular Shawl with Sheer Bands by Georgia Farrell. And I am making this pattern with a yarn from Premier. It's called Chamonix and I'm using the tide pool color to make this pattern. I thought that this design was so beautiful and right now I have a bandana sized um, amount knit up. <laughs> I'm probably like a quarter of the way or maybe a fifth of the way through this full design and I giggle to myself because I'm always talking about oh I won't have enough patience to finish something and you know I'll put something I'll put it down and I'll come back to it later on and I just am I'm just hoping that I can have this done by Christmas time this year because I really have visions of me wearing this big shawl around my coat um, during the holidays because my family does go to quite a few um, kind of winter style events and you know just going around 
to dinner or something or just going out just having this really glamorous big shawl with the tassels it just the vision I have of how luxurious and like warm and cozy I will be in my shawl just is motivation because as I've mentioned so so often I am not a shawl knitter at all like I've made one shawl now and I love it and I've been wearing it almost every day but that doesn't mean that I now am just really amazing at doing shawls because I will put this project down and not come back to it for quite a while but I am still trying to at least touch this project once a week um, because I know that it's going to take nothing but time to knit it up and if I dedicate at least a little bit of time to this project it will come along and come together and I have been keeping my progress marker to just kind of see how much progress I have been making because I know that's a really strong motivator for me being able to see you know how far I've come from the last time I stopped and I I think I'm just going to keep trying to do it that way. Just keep working on it slowly and hopefully I'll be able to finish this by Christmas time. That would make me so happy. But of course, you know, I love doing sweaters and things like that. So those projects typically do take my attention. And the colder it gets, the more excited I get about making garments. And it's a little bit of my downfall, really, because I get too many things going and there's no way I have enough time to finish any of those things while it's still cold. So working right now on finishing whips, sweater whips, is kind of like at the top of my brain. But I did want to talk about this project because I did make some progress on it since the last time I've shown this. And I want to show you the texture a little bit better this go around because you couldn't really see it that much with how much I had knit last time. So it has these garter ridge stripes and then it has the sheer um, stripes which are just in stockinette and it's with one strand held. So these garter ridges are two strands of the chamonix and then this is just a single strand so you get this kind of sheer effect. I don't think it'll really translate on camera that well but you can see how this is clearly thicker than the the stockinette portions but I love love that effect and the texture and like running this texture is awesome okay I just love it and I feel like it's gonna be such a nice piece to have or I don't have as much yarn as they recommend for this pattern so it won't be the full size I think I might sacrifice one or two um, stripes to be able to finish this project off and not buy more yarn because I th I'm fairly certain it's not that much that the yardage is off but also I'm not 100% certain on that. It could very well be um, that I don't end up needing to have those extra yardage or that extra yardage to finish this pattern because sometimes you know with those estimates they can be a little bit off so we'll see but I know it will still be quite big with how much yarn that I will be using because it is still three balls of yarn that I'm going to be using to make this shawl so I imagine it's still going to be quite large okay so give me a quick sec I'm going to go ahead and change into the next work in progress because I want to go ahead and wear it because I'm obsessed okay let me do that okay so <laughs> Okay, anyways, so this is my polar sweater. <laughs> well, part of it, anyways. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna roll it down because it's just obnoxious like that. Okay, so I made the polar sweater. I've been knitting on this project since last year because that's when Kim released the winter book, which is actually a um huge 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 like on my list of Kim Hargrave's books this book is definitely towards the top um and there's a lot of reasons why but one of the main reasons why I was drawn to this book is because it has a ton of bulky five weight projects in it now Kim Hargrave's patterns in the past have primarily been DK weight or um like super super bulky and I have another book from her, which is the book that I use to make the Midnight Cardigan, that blue cardigan that I've worn on this channel before. But 
this book is definitely one of my favorites I love a lot of the designs in here and I already know that I'm going to be making other um, others from this book I'm very happy that I'm at a point to where the end is in sight for this project as you can see there are a lot of baubles I have by the time I finish this project I will have done close to 500 or 600 baubles I want to say there's probably going to be at least a hundred baubles on each sleeve and the back I counted had 206 baubles I'm not great at math so I'm not going to do that on the spot right here but I'm just going to let you know that yes there are a lot of baubles on this project <laughs> but I love baubles okay I love baubles for a lot of reasons but I love them because they are so tedious and I know that's annoying but it is one of my favorite stitches to do but it is quite taxing on my hands in particular because I again have had hand surgery blah -de blah so I can't do these baubles for a long time and I was so excited about making them and doing them I would find myself overworking my hand quite often while making this project so I did put it to the side for a little bit so I think it was maybe May was the last time that I was knitting on this sweater so I have since finished the front and don't wow. even okay you're gonna laugh at me because this green stitch marker right here marks where I stopped working on the front in May this is the seam um why did I just finish this panel like why didn't I just finish this panel <laughs> I had to put it to the side I just did um and I you know it is what it is I came back to it with Avengers because I'm so excited to put sleeves on obviously it's just the body right now and I have seamed it all on the sides and everything and I think I did a pretty pretty good job on this seam too I'll have um, some pictures of course I finished the front panel of this sweater in between the last podcast and now and I went ahead and added on this huge she calls a polo neck but I feel like she calls anything that's not like two inch ribbing a polo neck but I made mine extra tall because <laughs> I'm extra cold in the winter time and I was just like you know this is like having a cowl in one and obviously I can just roll it down when I get inside because it would be impractical to have it you know flipped up all the time but I just wanted it to be like to shut the cold right out like right out and if I have a mask on and I have a hat on I will be so happy and warm I'm so excited about this and I was excited about this project when I first saw this book be released um, I of course ordered it as soon as it was live on her website because that's how I am I love these patterns so much so this particular design has a lot of really beautiful um, motifs in it and there's nothing that I love more than when Kim does a garter stitch like ribbing or a garter stitch band above the ribbing I think that detail is so freaking cute and I have that at the neckline um, and I also do have it on the bottom of the sweater as well I just oh okay anyways I've talked forever and I didn't even say what yarn I'm using because that's where things get sticky so I'm using a limited edition yarn from Lion Brand. This is Lion Brand Wool Spun. Now this yarn has been released twice since, or I guess its initial release was limited edition and then they released it again as limited edition. And this is, um, I love Wool Spun so much. I'm so excited that I'm getting to the end of this project so that I can work other Wool Spun projects. Um, but yeah, anyways, this is in the blush color and I don't remember how much of this yarn I um, ordered but I don't think that I ordered more than they recommended I think I ordered what they recommended like the number of balls they recommended to get for the project and so this is my last ball plus I have this which is left over from doing this neck band and that's all I have for the sleeves 
and I'm just not really sure what I'm going to do because this does not for a sweater that has a ton of bobbles bobbles take up so much extra yarn and the sleeves are entirely in bobbles as well so i don't know that this will be enough and i'm almost wondering what i'm going to do because i do not want to have short sleeves for this sweater because it was intended to just be so snugly and warm so i have had an idea I'm hoping that I can maybe make something happen about these sleeves by incorporating another yarn. I haven't gone to the trouble of trying to see if someone else has more of this blush wool spun color because I just don't think it's like that important to me. And I'll explain why. Um, so this is wool spun, which is a bulky five yarn. This is in the blush color. But I have this yarn from Lion Brand which is called Bellini. This is the Hue and Me yarn. This is also a bulky five yarn. It has the exact same wool content with 20% being wool, 80% being acrylic, and it has the same gauge. So what I'm hoping to do is maybe try to do some helical knitting at some point in the sleeve so I'm going to pick up the sleeves on the sweater and work it in the round going down using helical knitting um, the technique I don't know who started this technique or who created it but I'll leave a video down below that really helped me understand what was going on um, but they're not that far off in color and if I'm honest I really don't care I'm probably going to work with the wool spun until about halfway on the sleeves and then I will start incorporating this Bellini in because this color is so much easier to get my hands on because they obviously are still making Q and me yarn so I can find this color anywhere and I do have a really large amount of this for another sweater that I'm going to be making that's a turtleneck so I'm just like you know what it will be fine I'm going to um, just use some of this yarn which is already a part of my stash and if I end up needing a whole bunch of this like for instance if it actually takes even more yarn than I think it will take and I'm not able to get halfway down I might need more than just one ball of this hue and me but we will see. So I'm going to move on now. I'm going to leave. Should I leave this on? No, I'm going to put that other orange sweater back on. Okay, and I did want to just get some close-ups of the texture of this sweater. And I've woven in all the ends at this point, and it just makes me so happy. Like, oh, stunning. And then this is the side seam. I'm so proud of that seam like I never I never get a good seam like that and I haven't even blocked this yet so I feel like oh wait I went too far I feel like it'll get even nicer and flatter once it's been blocked and I am obsessed this sweater is super heavy also um <clears throat> my arm hurts from holding it up <laughs> literally just okay anyways so now I'm gonna move on to another sweater this is actually one I'm very happy that I've progressed to report back about I mean I'm happy to talk about all of them but this bag is is dad's bag because it's a non um, descript bag it's not as cute as like for instance this is what the polar sweaters in make time for sunshine of course Yes, I will. Okay, anyways, and then um, Nala's little one and also the triangular shawl is in Creeping It Real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, both of those bags are from Joanne, and I'll show the other bag as well. But this is from the place where I get my sewing machines from, um, and they gave me a bag with my other sewing machines so I've been using it as a knitting bag for Brian <laughs> because it works out perfectly for him I know exactly which one is for his stuff so his projects are in this bag anyways 
I've been working on my husband's spice cardigan, which is a pattern by Andrea Mowry. Um, it is the co-release with Spark Cardigan, which is a cardigan that I have made for myself, and I'll have that linked up or linked up for you over there if you want to check out more about that pattern. But I am making a spice cardigan, which is essentially the same design with a few few different tweaks, few different difference or few different details um, to the design. But it is worked bottom up. Oh my gosh. And I lost a bunch of stitches. Ooh. So I lost a few stitches there. Had to fix that real quick. But I am happy to, to share this. Okay, anyways. I'm using two beautiful... I don't know why every single time I want to show this pattern, I always have the yarn so tangled up. I don't know what, what that's about. And I don't know if it's me or my daughter messing with it. But listen... I'm trying to trying to straighten it out right now okay this is my husband's spice cardigan so this is a color work design I keep losing stitches I don't know what is going on there I'm gonna have to fix that later I'm certain of it but I'm working this on um, size 9 needles which is awesome it's a worsted weight project and I'm using cascade 220 in smoke blue and cascade 220 super wash wave in deep C. And oh my god, I love these colors together. I'm gonna get a close up of the color work actually. So let me. Okay, so this is what the color work is looking like so far. You can see all the different shades of that variegated yarn. I am so happy with this. This was not a pattern that I thought I was going to be able to keep on working on because the ribbing felt like it went on forever. I don't know why it felt like this ribbing took a long time, but I feel like it did. But once I finally got past the ribbing, um, basically row by row each day, I started working on the color work section. So now I've been picking this up every now and again, and I really think that if I give it a few days where I'm working on it as my only knitting project, that I'll be able to meet my deadline of hopefully finishing this sweater in time for my husband's birthday, which will be on the 9th, which is 1, 13, which is in 13 days. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, Saji, that is so much to take on. Now, yes, it is, okay? And I do want to make it in time for my husband's birthday, but I'm thinking that it will probably end up being something that I'll finish at the end of that week because it's not unheard of for me to be able to finish a sweater in that time period. However, I'm not going to beat myself up because I have gotten my husband something else for his birthday, but if I'm able to also finish this sweater as well and give it to him on his birthday, that would be really special too. However, I'm not going to stake my entire gift to him on me finishing my knitting because that would make it so stressful. It's, a ni it's nice to have goals, but also I'm not going to sit here and, you know, make myself knit on something that I don't necessarily want to. And um, this is actually my upstairs color work project because this motif is only a two stitch repeat over five rounds or six rounds, I guess. So it's very easy to memorize. It's not something I have to look at a chart for. So this is a project that I can work on while I'm watching TV or while I'm in the car or something like that. It's definitely not as intense as other color work projects that I'm working on. So I'm hoping that by um, the fact that I'm on the color work section now, I will start to do um, knitting on this project during the times where I'm watching TV upstairs with my family or while I'm watching TV with my husband. Um, we do spend quite a bit of time doing those things. <laughs> so I'm hoping that by spending a good amount of time on this that I can at least um, make significant progress on it to where hopefully by the time his birthday comes around he can at least try this design on. We will see how that goes as I've said. Um, I also know that at some point I'll have to knit on some sleeves so 
we will see how everything goes is all I'm going to say because um, I still need to buy more yarn for this project and as I think about it right now why haven't I ordered this yarn like if I was going to meet the deadline I definitely would need to have the yarn here so actually give me a second I'm going to order that right now now this next design <laughs> I probably have the biggest smiles for because it is coming along beautifully. So this is the Lazarite cardigan by Martin Story. This was also a pattern in Rowan 70 magazine. And I am making this pattern using Red Heart yarn and Twinkle yarn. Red Heart Super Saver is this cafe latte color and Twinkle yarn from Big Twist is the silver color that has the sparkles in it. All right, so this is what this panel is looking like. I think I'm working the left side. It is so beautiful. Ah! And the front, wait, where's the front band? Okay, yeah, so the front band actually is left on a holder, but it has a really beautiful twisted um, rib design for the front band, which I'm excited to continue working. I have enjoyed working this project. It has been a project that has really made me go slow for the first time in a long time because I noticed something right away. My strong suit with Fair Isle is definitely in the round, definitely not a front and back Fair Isle tension expert. I don't know how else to title that, but I'm fairly happy with the tension and that I am able to maintain while doing the color work of this pattern. Um, I have had a mistake that I actually did fix within the design, so I will put up a little video of that. I think it should be ready to show you <laughs> where I fixed one of the motifs that I had gotten wrong. I think I was just reading the pattern the opposite di opposite direction. So uh, the motif was just a little bit off and I was like, what the heck? And I didn't notice it until quite some time. I mean, it was like... I don't know, close to 10 rows later where I realized, hey, you messed up there. <laughs> and so I just went ahead and fixed it. I mean, who cares? I went ahead and uh, dropped a couple stitches and went through and fixed it so it was right because I was at a point to where it would be feasible. I mean, obviously you could do it for a super long time, but you don't want to mess around with your tension that much, especially when it is a stranded color work project. So thankfully I had enough yarn to kind of finesse and make it work so that I could fix the motif and it be correct. So it was just bothering me. And normally I'm like, uh, it's a mistake and I'll just let it go. But this one was a mistake that I could easily fix just by using a crochet hook. So I went ahead and did that. And it turned out great. <laughs> I'm very happy that I went ahead and fixed that. So I'm going to start working with the color work again because I had taken a break because I knew I needed to fix that, um, that error if I wanted to because it was only going to get more and more difficult and tedious to drop those stitches down to fix it. So, um, but by the time I had gotten past that mistake, I really feel like my tension has definitely improved leaps and bounds. Um, and I'm very, very, very pleased with how it looks. So I was questioning about my yarn choice, but honestly, I love these colors together so much. I think they contrast beautifully and I'm so excited to have this cardigan done. Um, I've been working on this one by my bedside because I do need to have quite a bit of concentration and focus while I'm uh, knitting this. So I definitely can't do it while my daughter's running around or while I'm watching, you know, um, watching something that I'm really, really interested in because I won't knit as much. So I usually knit this after everybody goes to sleep and it's just kind of like a little project for me to just sit and meditate with while I'm working on my tension because it definitely was um it definitely was quite difficult to figure out what techniques worked best for me doing fair aisle flat so I'm very happy very happy with how it looks but I will be more happy once the front panel is finished and I can really see what the what the effect will be like. The back and the sleeves of this design are both um, 
knit in just the cafe latte color so just in plain stockinette so I know that once I get past the front two panels which have ferrule on them the sleeves in the back will come together so much more quickly because they're just knit straight up and down basically but I'm liking this so much um I think I'm about halfway through this uh, front panel at this stage so very very happy with how these look together that shine so I'm really pleased with how that project's coming along I knew that I was going to really really like this design but I get more and more excited the more I'm able to go through this pattern because there are so many things that I feel like would have tripped me up before but I, I am able to work quite um, quite calmly while it's just me and really just focus on my attention and enjoy working through my repeats and everything so it's been really nice I really am enjoying it so now I'm going to move on to some yarns that I recently purchased from Joanne. I'm so excited. Okay, so I was losing my light a little bit because it is starting to get darker a lot sooner. So I went ahead and turned on a lamp. So hopefully that's better. Um, and we're going to get into some yarn that I recently purchased. Okay, so I went to Joanne to take advantage of... Ooh, I went to Joanne to take advantage of their Pound of Love for $6.99 sale as I mentioned earlier in the video because I cannot pass up a good deal on Pound of Love especially because they've added a couple of colors that I've been meaning to get my hands on since I saw them come out. I don't know if they've always been available but my store hasn't carried them before now. so. I want to share some of these colors with you because I'm obsessed with them. Okay, and I already have plans for what I want to do with all of these sweaters. So, or all. Oh. <laughs> I already have plans for what I want to make with pretty much all the yarns that I'm going to be sharing today. So, the first color that I'm going to talk about from Pound of Love. So, they I haven't bought any that have had the new... Uh, lion brand like style uh, bands and stuff on them I to my knowledge I think all of the yarns have been rebanded and like redesigned their packaging and stuff but anyways this is my first time getting this yarn and I feel like it's softer I don't know <laughs> I don't know maybe I'm just imagining things but anyways this is the first color that I got and so this is it in the light yeah so this is it in the light it's called fern I don't know that I would say this is a fern color okay I think when I think of fern I think of something much darker but it's a really beautiful green shade and I got this color in combination with another color which is olive also I don't know these seem like the washed out version of those color names these are this is definitely true to color I'm going to be making a sweater combining these these two shades though um, this color is going to be the top of the sweater and this color is going to be the bottom of the sweater and the sweater that I'm thinking about making is called oh my gosh I'm going to butcher the name ooh Konexi Konigsi, 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 Konigsi. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but it's the name of a Bavarian lake, I think, is what they named the pattern after. But it's a recent release from Expression Fiber Arts, and it is so cute. Okay, I'm a sucker for turtleneck anything, so I'm already one over with that detail but then you added cables to the mix and I'm obsessed for real now this pattern I know is originally written to be worked with two strands of a sport weight yarn in five different colors which gives you that really beautiful gradient that she has on the sample has on in the sample picture and whereas that's so beautiful and I can see that being amazing, I also don't see myself buying that much sport weight yarn or being able to find a sport weight yarn that would fade in the same way that hers is. And I just, 
I won't be purchasing that yarn because she also says in the pattern that it can be worked with a level four weight yarn as well. So what I think I gathered was the fact that you are going to be marling the yarns to get that sort of transition of color where you would be holding one strand of each color, which is a technique I've talked about before um, that Kim Hargraves uses on some of her ombre projects. It's a very common technique. Marling isn't you know, brand new or anything, but I just didn't want to go through the hassle of trying to find a yarn, five different yarns that would transition the way that the yarns in the sample transitions. So what I did instead was decide on doing just a two color version of this sweater. And I think what I'm going to do is have one section in the middle of the body where I will do some type of color work design that will mimic the look of marling. Um, and kind of randomness to give that effect of an ombre but still be using a level four weight yarn so we'll see how that comes together but that's definitely why I purchased these so that I could make a sweater wait so that I could make a sweater with these two I think they look really beautiful together and I know that it usually takes about two balls of yarn to make a single sweater so I went ahead and bought one of each color and I think that that should be enough for the sweater. But if not, I don't mind purchasing more of either of these shades because I think they are so beautiful. Even though they're not Olive and Fern, I definitely would have named these different things. I had no idea that was the name of these colors. But I got one more pound of Love yarn. And this one is in Mocha, which is so pretty. It's the prettiest shade of like mauve brown. I really really like the tone of this brown. It's very rosy. I think it's really really flattering on my skin tone. So I want to make another Marie Green sweater um, like a two week knit from that book um, and pick a different pattern that also uses a level four weight yarn because I think a lot of the projects in there might use DK weight yarn. I think it's either DK weight or um, worsted weight is the majority of the yarn weights for the projects in that book so I'm going to see which one I want to use but I definitely know I want to do this mocha shade as a new two-week knit sweater <laughs> and I okay I know I'm gonna to have to buy another ball of this but I'll deal with that when I cross that bridge there was only one mocha left over at my store so I might end up buying the other ball online and trying my luck maybe doing some more helical knitting to blend the two shades together if they aren't quite um, that similar so we'll see I also got a new yarn from Big Twist I'm pretty sure this is a new yarn I haven't seen it in stores before or on their website so I'm pretty sure this is new for Big Twist this is Big Twist Freelance which is a level 4 acrylic weight yarn and I got two colors so pretty I am just about these two colors so anyways I'm going to be using both of these colors for a different expression fiber arts pattern that one is called lake or no fall loaming is the name of the design and I am hoping to use these two as two of the colors that are a part of let me see ooh, ooh, can I get them both to face okay so I'm hoping to use these two yarns as two colors in that shawl but I'm also going to be combining a cream yarn well specifically Erin yarn from Red Heart which is just like an off-white heritage white natural white color which I think will work really well with these two yarns because that is one color that is um, the same in both of these yarns even though they have you know other colors that are contrasting in there and I'm also going to use a dark brown um, I think it's gonna be chocolate or dark chocolate one of those which is a red heart super saver yarn as well so I'm going to be using those in combination with each other I think they'll they complement each other beautifully but in between a really rich brown and cream shade I think it will be so 
pretty and just the look of this pattern it has like this really beautiful knotted open work design mixed with stockinette mixed with some garter ridges so it's texturally a very interesting shawl but it also has that benefit of the um, what she has variegated yarns mixed with solid color yarns which is where I got the idea to do something like that with this with these two yarns because I think it will suit the pattern very well and having that kind of beautiful visually dynamic um, like open work with the garter ridges of solid colors going through these pattern or through these two yarns I'm excited I'm I I don't think I could have planned out my trip better I did not know I was going to be able to find this and those other two yarns that really um, caught my eye and so the last yarns that I'm going to share with you are another new yarn that is from Big Twist. Oh gosh. Okay. So this is called Big Twist Arcade, which is a bulky five weight yarn. These are also acrylic. Okay. So these are both acrylic yarns, but they are more of a roving style yarn so it has that really kind of unspun single ply look and it has beautiful variations of tone so this one is called natural white multi nice very creative name um, and then this one is called turquoise brown multi so pretty these come with 150 grams of yarn, so it's quite a bit for a bulky five project. So I'm thinking of making um, either like a cowl or I'm thinking about making a really big ribbed hat because I know I would need to add quite a bit of yarn to make a ribbed hat that wasn't stretched to the max. So I'd have to increase the number of repeats. So I'm hoping that by having 150 grams that I'd be able to get through a hat that is actually big enough to go over my head. That would be so exciting. So I'm hoping to try to do that with this or potentially making like just some knit headbands or I was thinking about some mittens, but probably not mittens. But yeah, these really feel very like roving wool style yarn. You wouldn't know that there wasn't any wool in here, I guess, until maybe you wore it because it obviously wouldn't wear like wool. But I love the texture and how it looks. I know there's lots of bulky five um, cowls. That would look really beautiful with this variegated yarn like I'm thinking about Lion Brand Scarfy how a lot of like scarf type patterns came out with that and I'm not sure how much yarn came in those balls but I'd be willing to buy an extra ball if it meant I could make a really cool cowl or something too after I made one hat I don't know we'll see but I love these two colors and I think there's some other colors there that are really beautiful as well but this one is probably my favorite of the two because it mixes with that brown. I really love this like brown to blue fade and also this kind of golden color here. This one really, it sung for me and I want to wear something with this real bad. So that's all that I have to share with you today. I have got fluff everywhere <laughs> from yarn just shedding all over the place but um I'm, I'm really loving these projects that I'm working on and I'm really excited to um, have such fun projects on my needles right now. Let me know what you're making on if you're knitting on anything new or if you're interested in grabbing any of these big twist yarns because they are absolutely stunning. Um, so lucky that I was able to be there right when they were putting the yarns out because I don't think I would have been able to get my hands on the colors I wanted if I would have waited even an hour after getting there. It was so big on the Saturday that we went so yeah but I think that like I said these yarns are so beautiful and I could not help but to grab at least some I don't know how long they'll be able to last on shelves to be honest I know that they literally were just unboxing them <laughs> when we uh, went over to the yarn section so I'm thankful that I was there just in time to snag a few of these beautiful new yarns. But yeah, that's where I'm going to love and leave you today. But I thank you so much for giving me your time today to talk about some knitting and yarns, knitty and yarn stuff. 
Have a great rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.